So this is a quick response to Chrissy the World Within uh, and your video on libertarianism, Dr. Ron Paul, and uh, regulation. I'm going to start by citing the work of Bob Chapman. Uh, this guy does the International Forecaster, a monthly newsletter you can get free online. Bit of a plug for you there, Bob. Now, he told he said in an interview once that Bernie Madoff, uh, who you probably remember, could have been busted years before he did. Uh, however, he blames selective enforcement, okay? If you're going to get nothing else that I'm saying here, you've got to understand this concept. Selective enforcement. It's how the big guys stay big by making sure that no one else can become as big as them, which would make them average. Now, there's regulations galore out there. Most, uh, most businesses give a politician or two some, or form a lobby with their other industry mates and uh, give campaign contributions to senators that champion bills that have massive loopholes for them and keep their competition impoverished by making them buy machinery they don't need or uh, tags that don't do anything for their animals. Or just as two examples, uh, there were two lobbyists that even wrote the Obamacare uh, legislation, which has been uh, criticized by a lot of people, especially libertarians. Now, so it's not about the regulations that you have, it's about how they're enforced, by whom, and for what reason. Now let's get on to Dr. Ron Paul. He is a quintessential libertarian. His underlying belief that government should not provide health care, education, or anything else comes from an unspoken, or really should be, belief uh, that individuals must be ultimately empowered and that the federal government is answered to the collective of states that make it up and the states are answerable to the empowered individuals that make up uh, those states. So inherently, uh, the libertarians believe that it is a state's responsibility to maintain its own roads, its own schools and its own hospitals and it's your job as a member of that state to help decide and uh, argue out with your fellow members of your state how that uh, community will construct those services. Now, this negates that, that this reduces the argument of uh, medical, medical marijuana, medical abortion, uh, the content of textbooks and national curricula down to an issue between the pair, the PTA. Uh, so that if you want a, if a company wants to sell a textbook as a standard textbook anywhere in the United States of America or any other country that has libertarian philosophy, they will have to go to each individual, send a representative out to each individual PTA to sell that book. That's why, now as for, far as him doing that right to life stuff, interesting fact, in the law dictionaries, like Black's Law Dictionary or something similar, the term right, okay, is actually quite ambiguous. Don't believe me, don't you dare believe me, look it up, you're online, you're watching this video, you can get to a search engine, I recommend start page, and check it out. The definition of right is heavily ambiguous, and I think there's only a, really an entry for claim of right. And as far as what rights are, well, we don't know. This is why the United States Constitution's Bill of Rights is in fact negative. It negates um, the government from being able to claim certain things. It cannot search your stuff without a warrant that is specific. It cannot uh, take away uh, the person, the militia's guns. Uh, it cannot, and thus, thusly, it cannot uh, really disband an army. However, that's a whole difference. However, it can't raise. However, in the original version, it couldn't raise funds for a war without going to the states to buy war bonds. So when a state said, "I'm not buying it," uh, and enough of them didn't, the war got cancelled for lack of funding. Not a bad idea, really.
So, I just wanted to give that as a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a background to what you're talking about. So, as far as marijuana goes, I still think that either anarchism uh, or libertarianism is probably the best bet for getting it legalized, because. The people that drummed up all the hysteria over smoking a bit of harmless reefer uh, were the paper mill operators who found it easier to shred trees rather than hemp. And of course they're buddies. Not to mention the shortage of um, medical marijuana plants and a few other things meant that the uh, pharmaceutical companies could push all kinds of drugs. So, it ain't about whether a bunch of regulations are there. It's about how they're enforced. And, to be honest, I don't have a lot of faith in the way they are enforced here in Australia, there in Canada or America. I'm Ozzy Griffin, and I hope this has uh, given you food for thought at the very least.